Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is facing new allegations of sexual assault. When it rains, it pours. Sean Combs, popularly known as Diddy, his longtime lieutenant Harve Pierre, and a third unidentified man allegedly gang R, a 17-year-old girl inside Diddy's recording studio in Manhattan in 2003, after the high school student was trafficked across state lines and plied with copious amounts of drugs and alcohol. An explosive new lawsuit filed Wednesday, December 6, alleges. The new Jane Doe plaintiff the fourth woman to accuse the bad boy founder of assault in three weeks, alleges the men took turns aring her in a bathroom at Daddy's House recording studio when she was in high school, and the Grammy winner was 34 years old. Diddy vehemently denied Doe's allegations in a statement issued shortly after the lawsuit was filed. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character and destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth," the rapper said a new statement. The new lawsuit alleges Jane Doe was out with a friend at a lounge in the Detroit area two decades ago when Pierre singled her out complimented her appearance, and insisted he was best friends with Diddy. Pierre purportedly told the teen that the bad boy boss would love to meet her and called Diddy on his phone so the music mogul could personally invite her on an impromptu trip to New York aboard a private jet. The 14-page complaint alleges the private jet eventually transported the teen to Teterboro Airport in New Jersey, where a waiting SUV whisked her, Pierre, and the third unidentified man to the studio where Diddy was finishing up work with a recording artist. The filing, obtained by Rolling Stone, features multiple color photos allegedly taken inside Daddy's house recording studio that night, including one where the teen is sitting on the rapper's lap. The filing claims that the teen was fed a copious amount of intoxicants as Diddy, Pierre, and the third man hit on her incessantly and groped her body. As the teen became so inebriated that everything started to blur, Diddy allegedly led her to a bathroom, removed her skirt and underwear, and penetrated her from behind with his pee while she hung over the sink, the lawsuit filed in the Southern District of New York states. Miss Doe did not consent to having S with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Miss Doe around to face him. He told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to help him get off. He then turned her back around and continued to R her, the lawsuit alleges. The lawsuit, which includes a trigger warning in bright red letters on its cover page, alleges the teen was slipping in and out of consciousness when she looked up in the mirror above the sink and realized the unidentified man from the plane ride had replaced Diddy and was now aring her from behind. According to the filing, Diddy was watching the assault from a chair just outside the bathroom. Doe alleges the unidentified man ignored her pleas to stop but eventually got out of the way so Pierre could take a turn. She claims Pierre first subjected her to non-consensual VX and that he finished by violently forcing her to give him oral S. Miss Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and that she had difficulty breathing, the lawsuit alleges. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her V was in pain. Once the teen regained her bearings enough to walk with some assistance, she was taken back to the airport and flown back to Michigan. The lawsuit also names Daddy's House Recordings and Bad Boy Entertainment as defendants. She has very limited recollection of the return flight and only remembers being in her car sometime early in the morning, it states. The lawsuit further claims Diddy and his associates spent a significant amount of time in Detroit and that the rapper had many connections in Michigan, primarily the Black Mafia family, a drug trafficking and and money laundering operation that is rumored to have seated bad boy. Lawyer Douglas H. Wigdor filed the new lawsuit on behalf of the teen after he previously represented RNB singer Cassandra Cassie Ventura in her bombshell November 16 complaint against Diddy that accused him of serial S. Ewell assault and trafficking. Cassie alleged her former boyfriend, R. Her, forced her to have non-consensual drug-fueled S. with other men while he watched and often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped her. The pair announced a settlement one day later. Diddy's lawyer said the pact was not an admission of guilt. Just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing, his lawyer Ben Braffman said in a statement to Rolling Stone. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Ms. Ventura the best.
Wigdor started the latest lawsuit from the new Jane Doe by invoking Cassie's case. He alleged that Cassie's claims were quickly corroborated by others and acted as a catalyst for more accusers to speak up in solidarity. He wrote that it was triggering for Doe to read Cassie's allegations of being forced to have S with other men against her will, but that she now understands she too had been S trafficked, and that Mr. Combs' behavior in forcing women into non-consensual S was not an isolated incident or unique only to Miss Ventura. In a statement to newsrooms, Wigdor alleges Diddy, Pierre, and the third unidentified defendant preyed on a vulnerable high school teenager as part of a S trafficking scheme that involved plying her with alcohol and transporting her by private jet to New York City, where she was gang R. He says the depravity of these abhorrent acts has, not surprisingly, scarred Doe for life. The lawsuit alleges Doe suffered monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages. Pierre, who met Diddy at Howard University before working for him at Bad Boy Records, was the subject of yet another lawsuit filed under the Adult Survivors Act on November 22. An unidentified executive assistant alleged Pierre groomed, harassed, and s -ually assaulted her on numerous occasions in 2016 and 2017. The new Jane Doe lawsuit filed Wednesday was brought under a New York City measure called the Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Act, legislation from the City Council that created a two-year look-back window for civil claims that previously fell outside the statute of limitations. The measure applies to claims of gender-motivated violence inside the city's five boroughs only. It expires on March 1, 2025. The three prior lawsuits against Diddy were filed under the state's Adult Survivors Act, which expired last month. After Cassie's lawsuit, two more women stepped forward on Thanksgiving Day with similarly disturbing claims against the executive. The second accuser alleged the rapper drugged and s -ually assaulted her when she was a Syracuse University student in 1991. The woman claimed the Coming Home hitmaker filmed the incident and showed the video to others in an act described as Revenge P. Through a rep, Diddy denied the allegation. This last-minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. This 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never assaulted her, and she implicates companies that did not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more, the spokesperson said. The third lawsuit alleged Diddy and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall took turns R, a plaintiff, and her friend following an event at Uptown Records in the early 1990s. The plaintiff claimed that days after the alleged incident, Puffy showed up at the home where she was staying and turned violent. He was irate and began assaulting and choking Jane Doe to the point that she passed out, the complaint alleged. These are fabricated claims falsely alleging misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute, a Puffy spokesperson said of the third accuser. This is nothing but a money grab. Though the father of seven has denied any wrongdoing, he stepped down from the chairmanship of his media company Revolt last week and reportedly was dropped by the Harlem charter school he co-founded. Liquor giant Diageo, meanwhile, is asking a judge to block Diddy's request for a court injunction that would allow him to use incoming marketing dollars to splash his face on advertising for Delay on Tequila. Diageo said such a campaign would be devastating for the brand. As expected, the internet has reacted to the news with one user posting, if Diddy was going to fight for his name, then why didn't he just go to court when Cassie gave him the opportunity? We'll wait. With another adding, this whole thing got me thinking about Diddy's love persona. It always seemed a bit over the top, but now it makes so much sense. People hiding skeletons tend to overcompensate. Well, there you have it. Do you think Diddy is going to catch a break anytime soon? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.